Hi you guys, it's me, Hair 101 with April, and I'm April, but I'm with me. Um, I just wanted to do a quick Q&A. You guys are so awesome. I asked you on Facebook and you quickly responded with tons of fun questions. So here we go. From Rebecca, she says, what made you decide to become a hairstylist? And she asked two questions. Did you work in a salon before you had children? Okay, so first of all, what made me decide to be a hairstylist? Well, it's kind of a funny story, but I've always loved and was obsessed with hair. I've loved playing with hair, braiding it, curling it, styling it. Since I was a little girl, I was always messing with someone's hair, getting my hair like braided or curling the neighbor's hair with teeny tiny curling irons. Love it, loved everything about it, loved manipulating it, seeing how to make it do different braids, shapes, colors, whatever. So it's always been something I've loved to do. And when I was in junior high and high school, it was always something that I kind of thought would be fun. I remember in junior high, we had played a game and we had to like, we, we drew out of a hat like a career. And mine was a hairstylist and I was like, oh, that would be so fun. And so we had to like make, pay all of our bills from the like salary that that person made. And it was just kind of funny that that's what I ended up doing. But in high school, I did a, a club that gave a scholarship if you won nationals. And we won nationals for like two years in a row. It was called VICA. And so we got this scholarship and on one of, it had to be a vocation because the VICA was like Vocational Industrial Clubs of America. So I had to pick a vocation to go to college. And so I had this list and the only one that I would even consider doing and actually I was really excited about was hair. It was the cosmetology program at the community college. So I was just like, it was like fate. I was like so excited and it just worked out because I seriously, there was no money for college. I grew up, you know, we didn't have much growing up, but my mom was a single mom of six kids and she worked full time, but didn't have a college education herself. None of my other siblings had gone to college. It was just kind of the situation I was put in and it was fine. But um, it was a really big blessing for me to be able to get that. So that's what made me decide to be a hairstylist was it was kind of just fate, I guess you could say. Um, and I loved every minute of it. I felt, and I was very grateful to be able to go to college and go to school. And so I really sucked in every bit of information that was thrown at me and tried my best. I didn't miss school. I was there on time. I worked hard. Like it was really something that meant a lot to me. Um, yes, I worked in a salon for four years before I had children. And that was also a really good learning experience and awesome for me to build my clientele and my confidence. And I mean, seeing other stylists, I still love all the ladies I used to work with. And I go into the salon and say hi to them sometimes. And we've even filmed a few fun music videos over there. So that is where I worked before I started having babies. And then as soon as I had babies, I felt that it would be easiest for me to be a mommy and still do hair. And I had very loyal clients that followed me right wherever I went. So it worked out great for me to do that. Okay. How to do fillers and what line do you use? I don't understand that at all, pop and toning. Okay, I just filmed a cute little, not cute, that's conceited, okay. Um, so I just filmed a little video about filling and formulating it into your color. And hopefully that one goes up before this Q&A, but I'm not sure. But if it's not up yet, wait for it and keep checking back because it will explain a lot of that and it was like a 10 minute video on its own. So I don't wanna take up the whole time on that, but if you want to watch the toning video I have, Davey put a link below of the toning video, that will help you out a lot. And then the filler video, if it's already out, please put a link below. But yes, check for those. Um, Ali Ali asked that. Okay, so Sharon says different fringes. It's not really a question, Sharon but I'll still talk about different fringes. Um, so if you don't know what a fringe is, it's like the front bang area of your hair. So yeah, I'm loving right now. I wish I had more people that wanted to do it because I'm thinking like the, the really straight boxy bangs are so cute. The fringe right now, like the twist cut. I mean, you can do so many fun things, but maybe I'll do a fun video on that. Okay. 
Nina has asked if I started out as freelance the first year. The answer is yes. I started out right out of college to a booth rent salon because that's what I felt like I should do. I'm not saying that that's the right answer for everyone. I think that everyone needs to fill out their situation and really think hard about what they want their future to look like and go where they're comfortable, but also a little bit out of their comfort zone. So that could be a chain salon. It could be, I mean, it could be anything. You could be at a commission, booth rent, chain salon. You could just be working. I mean, I know people that have gone straight to their house because they felt that's what they should have done. So they just kind of kept doing family and friends. Um, it's whatever you feel like you're supposed to do. There's room in this world for every type of person and every type of stylist that decides to do it her way. Don't let anyone tell you that you can't do it a certain way. If you feel you're supposed to do something, go for it. Um, I felt very strong that booth rent was right for me. I wanted to make my own hours. I wanted to have my own freedom on what color line I use and have my clients be able to follow me if I decided to leave. So I just felt like that was my best option. But like I said, it's not everyone's best option. I was able to make it work. It does cost quite a bit of money to get started when you're doing booth rent. So for me, it worked because I was being a waitress at Sizzler. And so I had an income that could support my dream of being a booth rent stylist. And it was able to, I think within like two to three months, I was able to transition over to only doing hair and, and drop my other job. But having that job there, even just to support the color line and all the equipment, I mean, you have to buy perm rods. A lot of the stuff I already had from being in school because our school made us buy like all of our own perm rods and roller sets and all that stuff ourselves anyway we weren't borrowing from the school so that actually was a benefit in the long run because when I moved into the salon the only thing I had to buy was some styling products and a color line so I spent about five hundred to a thousand dollars probably within the first two months on supplies and color lines and just kind of building it and um, it worked out really good for me so so Cindy Johnson asks, how do you stay up to date like on extra classes and advice on classes? And I've been finding some classes that are pretty pricey and I've learned more from you than these classes, but I need, but I need my credits. Okay. So I don't know where you're from, Cindy. It sounds like you might need to like keep a certain amount of education up to keep your license or something, or maybe you're still in school. I don't know what you mean by your credits, but in Utah, it's just, you just renew your license every odd year. So September is the time of the year, you guys. If you're in my state, this is it. We're renewing. Everyone, every cosmetology person in the state of Utah is up for renewal because it's an odd year, 2015 and in September. So I have my little email in my inbox right now. I need to go take care of that and renew my license. But um, back to your question. So you asked, what I do to stay up on education. Well, you're doing what you should be. You're watching other people's YouTube videos. I mean, I don't think that there's anywhere that's quite like that where you can sit in your pajamas eating a bowl of ice cream in your bed and see how someone does all of their color formulations and cuts. I mean, YouTube is pretty amazing and there's amazing people that you can follow, several of them, enough to where you probably couldn't watch all of them if you tried. However, I do think that there is a huge benefit to going and being like in a classroom setting at a show or an education class and you, you get certain things from that hands-on that you can't quite get all the time from YouTube. So I think that they're both really important. I think it's important to keep searching out ideas and answers on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube especially. But also I think it's important to at least once a year pick a show or an educational class or something that you can go to, grab a friend, someone from your salon, just another buddy from the neighborhood that does hair, whatever you need to do to make it more fun. But just go and, and then just like soak in the experience. You actually learn so much more and there's thousands of other like-minded stylists around you with amazing hair. Like you won't even believe how much inspiration you can get. And sometimes you feel like you don't even learn a ton at the shows, but even if you take away like one little bit of information that you wouldn't have found anywhere else, that's invaluable. So I think it's really important. Um, I'm going to a class in New York, one of the Redken 
three day classes and yes it is pricey I think it's like a thousand dollars just for the three day class and then you still have to pay your travel to get there but I'm gonna tell you right now when it comes to that kind of education where like Redkin's putting it on you're gonna get your money's worth for sure like you can't you can't even think for a second that it's not gonna be worth it because you're gonna be putting that much money into it, but what you're gonna get out of it is gonna be amazing. So I'm really excited about that because I know the quality and like the one-on-one -on -one with these people to ask the questions, bounce off ideas, figure out how to use certain things, get new ideas. I mean, the creativity level is gonna be insane. So I'm really excited about that. And yes, I realize that that's not something that everyone can do, but maybe it's something that you do, something like that, like every three or five years, but you just need to save up and like plan for that. So yeah, and whatever it is, you just look around you locally, you can try to find, you can try to find shows or whatever classes. And a lot of the local beauty supplies around here, they will also do classes and they're free. So some of them cost a little bit, some of them are totally free and you can just go and it's like local stylists or stylists from certain brands that they carry will come into the salon and show you a color technique or a new product or whatever. and super valuable stuff and it's very inexpensive or even free sometimes. So I would check your local beauty supply also. All right, and here's one last question for you. It says, ooh, where did it go? I have curly hair but it turns frizzy. How do I fix that? Okay, so my friends, you need some fun hairstyling products. So Redken has two really awesome lines. If you wanna straighten your hair, you would wanna use this one. Here we go. So here's a really awesome line for Redken. It's called the Frizz Dismiss, and they have a shampoo. I mean, they have a whole line, shampoo, conditioner, mask. They even have these awesome little dryer sheets that are for your hair that you just kind of rub on, and it adds like this soft defrizzing product through your hair, and it works really, really good. It just smooths all the little flyaways away. Really cool product, but it's like better than a dryer sheet because it's actually made for your hair. I don't support people putting stuff on their hair that's not made for their hair because it's not made for your hair but this is and it kind of smells good it smells better than dryer sheet so um yeah they also have this instant deflate leave-in oil little 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 oil serum and the um, lightweight smoothing lotion spray so yeah this would be your best friend this frizz dismiss redkin line um, they also have, if you're wanting it to have more curly, like if you could put this in your hair and wear it curly still, it will keep the frizz down. But if you want to definitely wear it like really curly and have something to enhance the curls and take the frizz out, they have another awesome line that's the Curvaceous line. And they have like a hair ringlet lotion and some, I use it on my little girl Ambry when I want her hair to be like really pretty curls. How do I feel comfortable, confident with short hair? I don't know. I've always just really loved creating texture and like ripping it apart and just like building on it and making it look how it's supposed to look. And I think that that's how I got good at short hair was that I would keep messing with it until the texture that I wanted was there. And so I learned early on how to create like a picture and just say, oh, I bet they used a razor to get that or whatever it is and just kind of shape it and mold it and copy the picture. So that's kind of how I started getting good at short hair and now I just love it. Like I love short haircuts. I really do feel comfortable in short hair. Long hair I feel comfortable with too. It's just short hair I just feel like I can be so creative with as far as like cutting and texturing and stuff. And I think that's a good place to end. Thank you guys so much for all the awesome questions. I'm so sorry I didn't get to all of them. My voice is going out so I have to stop. But I love all of you. And I'm so excited to be able to share my hair journey with you guys and have this channel. I mean, it's just a dream come true and I'm very, very grateful to you guys. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. And please, if you haven't yet, click the subscribe button and go and follow me on all of the social media. It's all in the links below. And also, if you want to know more about me and my family, there is a vlogging channel where we upload daily vlogs. It's called April's Eye. And that is going to be where you get all the nitty gritty on my kids, my husband, and the new baby. We're expecting a little girl in December. So thank you guys once again. I love you. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.
practice makes perfect. And in your head, you can see this beautiful haircut, this beautiful A-line, this is what I want to do. And then the end result, you're thinking, it doesn't look anything like it. That's not a fail, that's a huge success.